the reason they did it was because it had all the symbolism associated yeah. with it. And it's a worldwide it is a worldwide event. I mean they celebrate Christmas and got over I mean in a zillion countries around the world that aren't necessarily Christian countries. Yeah. They celebrate it in Japan and China. Uh, Russia, who's Greek Orthodox, they celebrate it. The only people that don't celebrate Christmas really are the Jews who was created by them. But the Jews like Christmas because? Because they celebrate Hanukkah first and then they sell everything to the Christians. Afterwards. And every Jewish person I know likes Christmas because they celebrate both. Well, I know. I mean, my family celebrates both. We celebrate Hanukkah and then the kids would say, okay, Hanukkah is a good day to get fat on. I mean, that Hanukkah celebration is lots of food. And so what happened was the Christians stole the food idea from Hanukkah and moved it over to Christmas with gifts. The, the, the Jewish gift is what they had the least of, which was food. So when you made something, when you made special delicacies for Hanukkah, That's that a was deal. a gift. It's just a, <clears throat> I'm going to go back to an episode I saw on MASH, where Emerson Winchester III gave all the kids that thing that they didn't have, which was candy and treats. Mm -hmm. You know, give them um, dried fruit, candies, and they criticized him for doing that, and basically, he basically came back on them, and uh, with the bit that God says that you should give what you have to give, and what I had to give was what I gave. Mm -hmm. So that puts them in their proper place. They thought, well, you should have given them clothes and stuff. And they said they didn't. My, my, we had that battle in my home for years. My mother thought Christmas was a time to give all of her children shirts and underwear and shoes and, and handkerchiefs. And my father... Your mother was Jewish? My mother was New England English. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, my, her, her, her grandmother, so she my gave grandmother him, was Jewish. Though. So she gave them the presents for Christmas that she was going to buy them anyway because they needed them. Yeah. Then she figured she was doing two things with killing yeah. the and the kid, so. none of you know, you, you, okay, here it is. Uh, you go under the Christmas tree, you basically knew which was which, so you piled all of them off to the side, you piled, you put the toys and stuff up front. My father was big on the toy department. My father would say, don't let your mother know, but here's a hundred dollars. Take your sisters and brother out and go buy toys for one another. Ooh. And then on Christmas... And that's when it was a lot of money. Yeah, and, you know, <laughs> but then, you know, my, my, my little sisters would be, they'd be amazed. And they bought the toys out. They'd, oh, a Barbie doll! And then my brother, but didn't she buy that thing? And, you know, yeah, but her sister wrapped it, so it's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> So they buy every bed, buy all the presents for themselves and then have the other people around. And, and put it this way, my mother, where did the kids get that money? <laughs> you know, and my father, I don't know. I guess the grandmother gave it to him. Oh, which one? In fact, like my mother wanted to know which, she knew it wasn't her mother because her mother would, would do would, no, not my, not my grandmother from, that was a movie, was in the movie business, the script advisor. She would stiff you for dinner. She'd take you out to dinner and you'd end up paying for it. So when people didn't want to go to dinner with her. I mean, I went, I took her out one Christmas to buy, you know, her, you know, she was going to buy, they had some heirloom roses on sale. She was going to give the ch her children, you know, heirloom roses to plant in their house to remember her. Oh, I didn't bring my money with me. Mm -hmm. Oh, Cam, can you, pay, can you pay for all this? I'll give it back. I said, yeah. I always brought money when my grand when I was out with my grandmother, but my father. Well, you could have not brought money. You just said no. No, I always knew that she was going to do that. So, but people didn't go with her. They, what happened was it would be like, who's going to take grandma out shopping for Christmas? No one wanted to go. And uh, I said, I, I can't. Uh, I, I you know I'm, I can't drive yet. And well, no, I, I've got an appointment. And guess who ended up taking grandma out to go Christmas shopping? But. Um, uh, but you know, but since everybody generally has four grandmothers, and my father would just say, "This grandma," and I also had great grandmothers alive at the same time. Too. So my mother, she really would, you know, did you give the kids money to buy gifts? And they'd say, "Probably." I just don't remember. <laughs> yeah, not only one would only, and my mother's mother would be the only one. You got to be kidding, you know? Like she, like she. But um, uh, but now we're going to come to Santa Claus. I, I go, 
I would go something, I would go anything about Santa Claus, Santa Claus, Santa Claus. That's as close as I can get to Christmas shoes because they'll sue the hell out of you and do anything that sounds familiar. Ah. We have been hit by, you know, you cannot do anything with Santa Claus. It sounds like somebody else, they'll, they'll order you off. This is a good one. I got. I like this one. I got 12 pages on Santa Claus. Oh yes, I guess we were going to be talking about. Yes, well, Santa, Santa Claus is to many. He's the the figure of Christmas. I right? think. Where he's also known as oh well, no one knows. He's Father Christmas. He's known as Saint Nicholas, Old Saint Nick, Kris Kringle. Right, all those above, and you probably have some other names for him too. Yeah, uh, you know, actually, if um. If you watch the TV specials coming on now, you're going to see uh, 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 each one of these characters done in Christmas specials. Mm -hmm. Each one of them, because uh, uh, you know, it just depends upon uh, who's, doing where, it? who's doing it and what time period was set and where it was set. Oh. Because um, English, would, and if it's a, if it is a Christmas Carol, it's Father Christmas. If it is, uh, if it is uh, uh, German or American or Canadian, it's Santa Claus. If it is uh, lower European and, and the Soviet Union, it's, uh, you know, it's St. Nicholas. Nicholas. Yeah. So St. Nicholas is a Russian, folks. He's a Greek Orthodox, which most people don't understand. Um, um, but it also can give you some ideas about what you're watching. Yeah. But he, he said, you know, actually, he tells you who you're watching. It tell you exactly the origination. the origination of the program that you have on. Because generally, most of the Christmas Carol stuff is done by English companies, not American. Really? Yeah. Oh. Because American will say Santa. Uh, if you're doing a, okay, if they do an American version of the Christmas Carol, it's almost always Santa Claus because they don't read Dickens. Mm -hmm. They just know it by heart. So. Uh, old Saint Nick. Um, basically, uh, Santa or whoever he's called, depending on you're out. Bringing gifts to the homes of the good children during the late evening and overnight hours of Christmas Eve, December 24th. The modern figure was derived from the Dutch figure uh, Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Like he's in winter. Yeah. Right. Which, that's right. Santa like he's in Claus. Santa. He's, he's a center of good will. Yeah. Uh, which in turn may have part of his basis in um, a heliographic tales concerning the historical figure, the gift giver, Saint Nicholas. Uh, and nearly identical stories attributed to Greek and Byzantine folklores of Basil of uh, Caesarea. Basil's feast day on the January 1st is considered the time of exchanging gifts in Greece. I mean, you don't think... See, we understand why I'm covering... I, I included Santa Claus in with the history of Christmas. Because they're... Why? The history of Christmas is actually combined with Santa Claus because oh. you just got... They give you a figure, not more figure, now, uh, celebrated in Greece also now. Mm -hmm. So Russia, Greece, and the Holland. So there, there you got one. And Santa Claus, he's, he's generally depicted like oh, this oh, plump, oh. jolly, white bearded man. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. Wearing a red coat with white collars and cuffs. Well, this is like my closest. <laughs> Although this is what? No, that's our that's, that's our that's our traditional holiday outfit for an honest friction. Yes. We will tell you also that Monty has a similar outfit. Yes. And he also has white cuffed red trousers. Actually, it's a red suit with trap with white cuffs yeah. and black leather belt and boots. You know, the big, the big fat black. That's uh, yeah. yeah. That's because that was a typical um, uh, a, a typical uh, uh, monk's wear or something back in those days. You know, oh, to really? keep warm when he'd go out. Hmm. The hat would be, you know, like the, this hat right there and. Uh, and the out belt would be because a big belt to keep the, you know to keep his clothes to up, keep his pants up, yeah. So, and images of him rarely have a beard with no mustache. Yeah. Mm. So it became popular in the U.S. and Canada in the 19th century due to the sin significant influence of caricatures and political cartoonist Thomas Nast. Oh, I didn't realize he was the one that. Yeah. That, that makes sense, though. Yeah, it's been maintained and reinforced through songs, radio, television, shoulder books, and films. The North American depiction of Santa Claus, as it developed in the 19th, 20th century, influenced the modern perception of Father Christmas, Santa Claus, and Saint Nicholas in European culture. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, like I said, you get, there you go, know, basically, ooh, that, that might be more than the North Pole. Oh, I love this idea that he does the naughty and nice list. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. But um, according to tradition, which we trace back to the 1820s, Santa Claus lives at the North Pole with a large number of magical elves and nine, originally eight, flying reindeer. You know who that one on the front right is? Right off the red nose reindeer. That's as much as we can do without being shut off. Yes. But, yeah. <laughs> okay. Since the uh, 20th century, uh, idea popularized with a song, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I can't do that one either. It's not even in, it's in public domain. You can't do it because they don't sue you. Mm -hmm. Santa Claus is relieved to make a list of children throughout the world, cater, categorizing them according to their behavior, naughty or nice, and to deliver presents, including toys and candy to all the good boys and girls in the world is sometimes cold to naughty children on the night Ooh, of Christmas Eve. It wasn't just in Charlie Brown. I know he, fit, he accomplishes his feat with the aid of elves who make the toys in the workshop and reindeer who pull his sleigh. Isn't elf. it amazing he can do all that? I mean, maybe the time zones help, but isn't it amazing he can do all that in one mm -hmm. night? Yep, yeah, now we're going to St. Nicholas and guess we're going to uh, move to We're going to move to Bulgaria now. Really? I was thinking it came out of Russia. Uh, the, uh, it, it did come out of Russia, but he was also, he was a uh, um, basically, he was the figure, primary figure of the Christian thing. Yeah, so, so a medieval fresco with St. Nicholas um, being depicted was from the Boyana Church near Sofia, Bulgaria. And St. Nicholas of Mira is the primary inspiration for the Christian figure of Santa Claus, or Santa Claus. That's what we call it, Santa Claus. He was a 4th century Greek Christian bishop of Myra, now Demir, in Lycia, a province of the Byz I know you're going, I've never heard of all these. Okay, if you go back and read the Bible, <laughs> yeah, no. the Byzantine, uh, Byzantine Anatolia, now in Turkey. Now. See, now we go to Turkey. See, Christmas is it's not, all over the it world. Is not it's what not. you thought it was. And it's actually, the Russians will tell you St. Nicholas was a Russian Greek Orthodox. Mm -hmm. This was Greek. But they'll, you know, it was the Greek Church, Greek Orthodox. But they will say he was a Russian saint, not a Greek saint. Uh, you will also see, you know, you will see Saint Nicholas predominantly in Christmas, uh, in their Christmas Greek Orthodox celebration. They they have lots of little Nicholas dolls. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true, huh? Yeah. So Saint Nicholas was famous for his generous gifts to the poor, in particular to these three impoverished daughters of a pious Christian with dowry, so that they would have to would not have to become prostitutes. I noticed that there's three. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wise men. And he's re very religious from an early age and devoted his life entirely to Christianity. In Europe, more precisely, the Netherlands, Belgium, Austria, and Germany, he's still portrayed as a bearded bishop in canonical robes. Yeah, see, they, I told you that's what they wore, the big flowing things. Up. Uh, okay, have you ever, okay, here we go. Look at pictures of Cossacks from that time period. They have the big flowing robes. The uh, oh, that's true. They do. For, see, the Saint hat. Nicholas usually has um, the robes. He doesn't have the pants. And the riding boots, mm -hmm. the gloves, and the hat like this, except it's put over on the, mm -hmm. you know, like that. So, see. Does it mean something different if it's from one side or the other? Uh, yeah. I wonder. Whether you're going to get mocked or not, I think so. Yeah, they do that. You know, because you do that in some of, you know, based on an earring. Or color, like in, in, even in Japan, they do that. Yeah. Depending on what you wear, it signifies whether you're available or not. Yeah, and like I love mm -hmm. this. In 1807, in 1087, the Italian city of Barbary, wanting to end the profitable pilgrimage energy at the time, mounted an expedition to locate the tomb of the Christian saint and procure his remains. The record was desiccated by him. <laughs> The desecrated by the Italian soldiers and the spoils of his relics taken to Barbary, where they are kept today. Well, basically, it means they were they were uh, licensed grave robbers, ah. called an archaeologist today. Ah. Um, a basilica was constructed the same year to store the loot, and the area became a pilgrimage site for the devout, thus justifying the economic cost of the expedition. He was later claimed as a patron saint of many diverse groups, from archers, sailors and children to pawnbrokers. He's a patron saint of both Amsterdam and Moscow, which is what I told you. See, that's why we just keep expanding, don't we? But they said numerous parallels have been drawn between St. Nicholas and the figure of Odin, a major god among the Germanic people prior to Christianity. Since many of them are unrelated to Christianity, there are theories regarding the pagan values of these things. Uh, Germanic people are Christianized and retain elements during daily traditions, serving various forms and such and such. such. But uh, Odin was built, you know, big fat, and it was referred to by many names. 
some of which described as prayers and functions and so forth. Are, oh, our uh, let's see, long bar meaning long beard and Jonar Yule figure. Wow. And, yeah, children would place their boots filled with carrot straw or sugar near the chimney for Odin's flying horse. Sepnar oh. to eat. Odin would then reward these children for their kindness by replacing Sepnar's food with candy or gifts. The practice still survives in Germany, Belgium, and Leather, which became associated with St. Nicholas since Christian days. In other countries were replaced by a hanging of stockings at the chimney. Isn't that something? I think the stockings are better because I can only imagine if you put your boots out with food in them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would make. First of all, mess would be pretty stinky. I know, we got Dutch. But maybe the horses didn't care. We got, we got Dutch folklore now. Ah, because in the Netherlands, which is in Belgium and Luxembourg, St. Nicholas, often called the Good Saint, is aided by helpers, um, commonly known as Wart Piet in Dutch, or Black Peter, or Pierre Foutard in French. Oh, his feast on December 6th came to be celebrated in many countries with the giving of gifts. However, in the Netherlands, the Dutch celebrate on the evening of December 5th with a celebration called um, Pachtus Saban. Okay. Deutschland. <laughs> uh, in the Reformation in the 16th and 17th centuries, um, Europe, many Protestants and others changed the gift bringer to the Christ child or Christ Kindle. That's Christ oh, child and Chris Kringle. Christ King. Chris Kindle is like Chris Kringle. Chris, 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 Chris Kringle. Kringle. Isn't that amazing? And the date for giving gifts changed from December 6th to Christmas Eve. You realize we're doing the most god awful big explanation ever done on Christmas and Santa Claus? Well, you know, it's like everybody takes it and then because, oh, yeah, they used to move to and create their own celebration. We're giving you, uh, we're telling you why, how, and stuff. But here we go. I loved it. Tradition holds that St. Nicholas. Santa Claus, you know, Chris. Uh, the arrived by Spain? Yeah, right. He from, from Spain in mid November, carrying a book that contains notes on all children in the United Child yeah. has been good, naughty or nice. Naughty or nice list. During the subsequent three weeks, St. Nicholas is believed to ride a white gray horse over the rooftops at night, delivering gifts throughout the chimneys to well behaved children while the naughty children risk being caught by Santa Claus' aides that carry jute bags and willow reins. You can guess what they did with the willow. But if actually, if it was in Mesopotamia or Rome, then ah, ah, yeah. So I noticed. Then we just hear. I noticed that they've had reindeers and they have horses, depending on who. 